coming to my regular press briefings we're going to talk about some fundamental issues relating to rule of law and the economy you see i'm the only presidential aspiring in this country that is versed in the law in terms of my training and experience and also versed in economics i have a degree in economics I also taught economics at the University of Liberia for eight solid years. So Liberia couldn't get it any better. These are the two areas that when you know, you can be a very good president in terms of policies that improve the lives of people. So here yeah, are two issues, two economic issues, very solid economic issues. And then the legal issue. Let me deal with the economic issue first. I said some months ago that the city's government, instead of elevating people from poverty, which is what the pro poor policy is about uh, when it was developed in Latin America, is multiplying poverty. And I gave an example. Immediately after I said it, Deputy Minister Jalawa Tompo came after me. I'm asking him now to react to what I'm saying and react intelligently. And there's no way you can make professional or common sense argument against what I'm going to say right now. Or anybody in this government. The government is multiplying poverty in two ways. In many parts of the country, the roads are not being maintained. Maintenance of road is a routine function of, function of government, especially in the Soviet in Liberia. Look, the roads that it should take few minutes to pass in Soviet in Liberia, it takes hours to pass. My personal example, that's why I think there should be now the standard of any presidential aspirant to go all over the country and see the conditions under which people are living. If I remain in Monrovia, I would not have known what I know about the country now. From Kilipo can we can to Gwipo can we can normal time is 20 to 30 minutes. This time I finished my function in Kilipo can we can at 5 o'clock and the people in Gwipo can we can were waiting for me at 6 o'clock. Liberians, I did not reach there until 1 a.m. the next morning. Everybody had gone to bed. Why? Because as soon as we got on the road to Gwipo can we can, we saw a stock of mud. As two weeks ago, it was in the dry season. Over 20 trucks and tankers were stuck in the mud. They couldn't move. So I took off my shoes and walked across all on the internet. I went across thinking that the vehicles would come out of the mud at least in one hour. By 9 o'clock, which is the time I usually go to bed, the, bed, the body is regulated. Based on that, every time, 9 o'clock, I go to bed. By 9.30, I just couldn't keep my eyes open. I pick leaves and put them on the ground. And I don't even know when I, I passed out to sleep. In the middle of the forest, I could have been bitten by a snake. And that would have been because of the dereliction of duty by this government to keep the roads maintained. So, Barro is also a threat to personal security. I could have died i could have been killed by snake the young people on the trip were all trying to use the shovel to reduce the mud for our vehicle to pass it was at 12 30 that somebody in the delegation came to bring me up and say the cars are out of the mud and then as i said i said so baro is a threat to peace and security but more than that it undermines any attempt to improve your lives you know, from poverty to better quality of life. Even the, the most rudimentary effort by a villager to make farm, whether it's rice farm, whether it's vegetable farm, you make your farm. I say planting farm, for example, I want to go to Monterey to sell my truck load of planting. You have your planting and you hire a truck. You credit money from someone, maybe from the Susu Club, or from a, a, a shop owner and say, I am carrying my plant into Monrovia. Next week, I will come back and pay you. Your vehicle reaches the road between 
people can wake up and kill people can wake up. You are coming from Webu Nyayaka, or you come from Kaloke, or you come from Boa Chicken, or Philadelphia, you know, or, or Silicon in Maryland. You will get stuck at the mud, maybe for 10 days, and your planting will get ripe and get rotten. And then you return to the village, you come in front of the bag, the, the Suzu Club, or the people who lend you money, and they say, Well, we don't care whether your planting got rotten, just pay our money because we need to devour Suzu at the end of the year. You go, your, the balance of money you have, you give it. And if the night no, you might even sell whatever you have. Then instead of getting richer, you are getting poorer. That is how bad road creates poverty or multiplies poverty. Now I want Jalatombo who come from Rigoji, the area I'm talking about, to react to this. He cannot in good conscience react to this. He might say, oh, but other governments have been there. Eh, this government came with a slogan, change for hope. It came to solve problems. It cannot excuse itself. The next way that this government is multiplying poverty is the extent to which it is dumping Liberian dollars on the market. Now, as we go to election, the government ruling party is giving money to the ruling party to give it to people. Not U.S. dollars. Nine million Liberian dollars is going to smaller counties each. Fifteen million dollars to Nima County. I studied economics. It's going to increase the exchange rate. And as the exchange rate goes up, the prices of essential commodities will go up. Gasoline, fuel, kerosene, uh, rice, everything. Oil, special imported oil, uh, uh, you know, vegetable oil, palm oil, everything will go up. Then, and because of that, rent too. People who are renting rooms, not, not the lease agreement, because the lease agreement is an agreement you pay. But people who are renting rooms, month to month, the house owners will transfer their hardship to the renters and say, I've carried my rent up, you don't want to leave. And this is going to create more hardship. One of my our peace and security of God, people will start getting angry with each other. Because a hungry man is an angry man. And as we move towards election, they think they are solving problem by pay for play, which is another thing. I am calling upon the American government to impose sanctions on President Weir, Pre Vice President Joe Howard, and the leadership of the CDC because they are engaged in pay for play. The American government has to be fair because it imposed sanction on, on McGill. Minister Matana, former Minister Natana McGill, former Solicitor General, CFOS, and 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 the tour, the Bill Tuawe, the, the the managing director of the MPA because of pay for play. It has to take it to a logical conclusion. They were spending less money than what is being spent now. And they have to stop them by sanctioning them. So they don't continue this, this part of creating difficulties for the Liberian people. It's going to make it hard for all of us. So those of us who will help the less fortunate, sometimes by giving them $5 here and there to help, might find it difficult to live ourselves. So it would be difficult for us to give, up, give hand out to our family, relatives, and friends. They are making this country difficult. They should stop. These are the major topics that I want to get to the public on. That they should be sanctioned, that they are multiplying poverty. And I say the government should be, President Weir should be impeached too. Because he violated his oath of office on the day of inauguration, he took oath to obey, defend, promote, and execute the constitution and statute laws of Liberia. The legislature made a law amending the code of conduct and said, now anybody serving in any appointed position that wants to run in an election should resign from office one year before the election that he or she wants to participate in. 
President Weir didn't have to tell people to resign because he, he didn't know who was running. But those who wanted to resign were already on notice from the legislature as to when to resign. He now, after his people had failed to resign, tried to, went ahead to violate the Constitution by issuing an executive order that showed a period less than a period prescribed by the legislature for resignation. That is a violation of the Constitution. He has no authority to do that. He violated his oath of office. And Article 62 of the Constitution says one of the grounds for impeachment of a president is violation of the Constitution. And gross misconduct. I think it's gross misconduct as well to flagrantly, flip, flagrantly violate the Constitution like that. He's not a king. We have a constitutional democracy and believe in the separation of power. He has no authority to make law. I'm calling upon the Senate, if they want the, Libra the, the Rep House of Representatives to start the impeachment proceedings and the Senate to vote to impeach him. Otherwise, the Liberian people should not vote for them. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Council. Um, let's go back to the issue of uh, the Code of Conduct. Um, like you said, the President violated the Code of Conduct. But let's look at the, the individuals who have the intention to contest in some of these uh, relations that are coming. Um, I'm sure some of these matter will be and will carry before the Supreme Court of Liberia. Uh, what can you say to the Supreme Court? Because the Code of Conduct has already been compromised and all of that has been violated. What can you say to the NEC in the uh, Supreme Court of Liberia? The President did not violate the Code of Conduct. He violated the Constitution by issuing an executive order when there was an existing law. Executive orders are meant where there is no law and the President uh, has something to do in his administration to aid the president. For example, when the president uh, came out of court of conduct, President Selig, and the court of conduct was not, had not passed yet, she issued an executive order on code of conduct. So, those who knew, every librarian knew that the code of, that the code of conduct had been amended by the legislature, and the president himself signed it into law reducing the time from three years, uh, two years to three years, in some cases, and two years to, to one year. So, uh, and then, the, in order to avoid the, the, the judiciary using any discretion, because in the interpretation of the Code of Conduct in 2017, the Supreme Court said, substantial violation, use those kind of words, uh, that required discretion egregious violation. So, the legislature this time said, was clear. If you don't resign in one year, you are disqualified from running. Therefore, the election commission should reject your application. The election commission is clearly instructed by the legislature to reject the application. On top of that, the Law also said that any person who will be affected by those poor participation can object, and then that objection will be held by the Elections Commission. You can appeal to the Supreme Court, but the court will uphold because it's strict law. There's no room there for any interpretation. So the Supreme Court will uphold it. But because it was not clear, the Supreme Court then decided to clarify. So what is the punishment? So Pringle was saying, is it fine? What is it? When, because at that time the law did not clearly say, if you don't do this, then you are not qualified. It just said, you have this period of time within which you resign, and did not give a clear uh, penalty for the violation. This time, the legislature improved that by giving clear uh, uh, penalty. You will not be qualified to run if you don't. So, Yaka Koloba and others, and many, many of the contenders may have their strongest con contenders out now by law. But TK women are all right now. Okay. Yeah, that's that's all. All.
you talk, you talk about the, the new law based on speaking the proceeding. Do you trust them that way? They will begin proceeding. We need to we have impeachment of our own. Yeah. You know, if the Liberian people want rule of law, if that is what they are really interested in, then those who are up for election, who do not begin the impeachment proceeding, might be in trouble. Because all members of the House are up for election. And that's where the, the impeachment, to vote on impeachment, should take place. If they don't, the Liberian people say, we say these people don't believe in rule of law. Fifteen senators are up for election. But they can have an excuse. The impeachment does not begin there. It begins the House of Representatives. When they finish before, we can vote on it. So the burden is really on the House of Representatives to begin impeachment proceeding. They impeached just a general before. So why can't they go ahead and impeach? If they don't impeach the president now, it shows that it was so unfair, grossly unfair to Justice Janet. Since they want to uphold the law, they're, 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 you know, right now, people will take them seriously if they begin impeachment proceedings. So I'm calling upon impeachment master Akara's grave, you know, Akara's grave, Thomas Fala, to begin. <laughs> Their authenticity, you know, uh, and their fairness will be enhanced by starting an impeachment proceeding against the president. I'm calling specifically, specifically, on Honorable Akara's grief to start impeachment proceeding against President George Weah for violation, violating the Constitution of Liberia, his oath of office. My, my, my name is Manuel, and I report for Sky FM. Um, the issue of impeachment and taxes, you have less than 10 months to election. So what, are you taking into consideration the upcoming election? Even after election in the United States, the country that will follow, they started impeachment proceedings against Donald Trump. Even after the election of Joe Biden. So while we have that time issue, they can act quickly. Because the issue is very clear. What, what, what other evidence you need? The president violated the Constitution. That's a one-day trial. That's a, that's a one-day decision that they can make. And they go to the Senate, it will also be less than a week of trial. Because there's only one issue. The president violated the oath of office not by not respecting the, 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 the legislature. The only branch of the government that can deal with the law in its interpretation and strike it at the Supreme Court, not the president. Yeah, Council, my question is almost addressing what he said. Um, looking at the time to the election, we have a few more months to the election, and you are talking about the change of president. And you quoted Article, 8, Article 19 of the Liberian Constitution. 62. 62, thank you. So, uh, can that constitution take effect now that we are almost few months to election? Can that constitution take effect to impeach the president after you have few more months to election? There is no exception in the constitution as to want to do it. It says when the president violates the constitution, he should be removed. In fact, this legislature can do what the legislature did in 1930. When President Charles D. Bikin and Vice President Alan Yancey were found guilty of selling Liberian labor to Fanatopo, engaging in slave labor, sending Liberians to Fanatopo to work as slaves, and the League of Nations found that to be true that before the United Nations was established. And the League of Nations wanted to take action against Liberia as a state that would have reduced the sovereignty of Liberia. The Senate, there were only 10 persons. Lawmakers called Charles to became President Charles to be We will not allow our sovereignty to be reduced by any degree. If you and your vice president are found guilty of engaging in slave selling of slave labor to Fanatopo, don't resign. We will impeach you, the two of you. Charles to became went to the office on the same day. I said the next day, wrote a letter of resignation. And his vice president wrote a letter of resignation, two of them submitted, and the succession clause of the constitution prevailed. 
At that time, on the 1847 Constitution, after the president, the vice president, if the vice president is not there, the secretary of state, which is the foreign minister, now the dean of the cabinet. So that's how Edwin Barclay became president of Liberia, because his two bosses were forced to resign. The power in the legislature is there. These people are not exercising. The cost is history of the legislature causing president and vice president to resign one day. That is what I'm asking them to do that in the interest of Liberia. Lastly, from an angle, someone might think that, okay, President, we are, you know, counts 20, you know, 23, talking about October, is one of the big years in terms of the election. So talking about impeachment at this time, you know, you just want you to give me so that those of whom want to be president can go and present. We are being put aside. What can you say about it? In the first place, from a survey of the country, President Weir is not even a third place in this election. Like have told me, the thing that happened with Dara Delaya twice is is not just Monrovia. The whole country is finished with President Weir. I had endorsements everywhere. You watch a video in southeastern Liberia, from Grand Jeddah to Grand Cru. Officials of government were endorsing me. They are finished with President Weir. But I didn't create this blunder that he created. So it's not that I'm looking for something legal to get him out, because I don't think that he can withstand me in terms of what I intend to do for the Liberian people. This election will not be about whether you love somebody, whether it is based on sympathy, the president being running before. This election, because the condition in Liberia will be, which candidate has the best plan for getting us out of poverty and for making us to live a better life? And let's check that candidate's track record. We are, has already failed. So it's not a factor. But I'm just pointing this as a lawyer. I owe it to my conscience and my country to tell the people what he has done to us. He has violated his oath of office that he took in. He didn't want to say it should have been a centennial pavilion, but at the SKD student. So everybody saw him clearly. Ah, Beku, Beku, Blam, 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 we are. Eh? Do solemns were to uphold. Defend, obey, execute the constitution and statute laws of Liberia. He has violated a statute law. He violated the constitution, actually, yeah, by Council. doing what he did. Yeah, Council, um, the president has violated the constitution on so many occasions, and you being a legal person, you've been in the country and you've been witness to that. Why now? Why are you calling for a sensation now? Because this one affects a very important process. The election will determine our quality of life tomorrow. And you want people who are disqualified, who don't respect the law, to participate in it. It's fundamental. Their degrees are wrong. This is very wrong. The fact that he is overriding the time set by the legislature and using his own time and asking his appointees to go by his time alone is a gross violation. Gross breach of duty. Who can I allow to go? Because he wants to be the beneficiary to get Josephine David and all these people to be the lawmakers, assuming that he will be elected. But he knows that he will not be elected because the first person that gave me an indication that they don't have confidence that president we will be elected is the former minister Nathaniel McGill. The fact that Nathaniel McGill was trying to run a senator in Bongane, Bongane rejected him, he came to, to Maggie. I said to myself, Oh, Maggie knows that President We has no chance in the coming election. Because he is the de facto president. At that time he was the de facto president. And that kind of revered position. Why do you want to come from that royal palace? down to share power to the now presence in the Senate. It didn't make sense to me. So I said, this is a fallback position because you know that we are not win. And if they know that we are not win, then I will also say, what do you think? I to second their motion that we know that we are not win. And that is why they're engaged in the desperate action of in increasing the exchange rate and, and imposing hard conditions of life on people. They didn't know that. Now that I explained, there's no way to get it. Now that they are, they are in violation, they are also in violation of the Minsky Act. They are pay for play. 
How you give somebody to call a loan and they say you don't have to pay back? <laughs> That's pay for play. So, Pastor, are you, in other words, telling us down that all of the validations the president made on the Constitution were not that important as compared to this one? Well, you know, everybody has a choice in terms of reasoning on what they consider important. Me, as a lawyer, the people who will take over for the next six years, the next nine years, are so important. They've already messed with our lives. They misrule us. That is in the past. But we can't give them another opportunity for misrule when they don't believe in the rule of law. The way I see it, that this is so important, it's fundamental. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Council.